So tonight, across America, from New York to Minneapolis to Los Angeles, places where rioters defaced buildings and allowed businesses like these to be ransacked. You said Black Lives Matter. Look what you did to my store. No, we've been here all night cleaning up. All night cleaning. Tell me Black Lives Matter. You lied. You wanted to loot the store. You needed money. Get a job like I do. That's Lucy Hosley. All right, so in all these places tonight, leaders are pushing plans to defund police departments, an idea so radical that it was once only seen in Antifa manifestos. But tonight, the idea is on the lips of these leaders as well. This is Minneapolis City Council President Lisa Bender. She says, yes, we are going to dismantle the Minneapolis Police Department and replace it with a transformative new model of public safety. In Los Angeles, Mayor Garcetti would like to cut his budget for police by $150 million. But some researchers say that after these widely seen awful videos of, of police brutality surface, the pullback in policing that tends to follow as officers curb involvement is met with spikes in violent crime. So the pullback in police, as we saw in Ferguson, after the death of Michael Brown and in Baltimore, after Freddie Gray died in police custody, the lack of the pullback in activity leads to an increase in crime and homicides. Still, as tensions run high across the country, videos like this add fuel to the anti-police sentiment. In Atlanta, this incident led to charges for these six officers. Two of them have now been fired. And then there is this footage of an officer pushing a man in the streets of Buffalo. And it ended like that. Of course, that goes viral. It is horrifying to watch. The firing of those officers has also led to some breaking news tonight. All 57 members of the Buffalo Police Department's emergency response team just a short time ago resigned from that unit in protest. Joining me now with reaction to all of this tonight, former New York Police Commissioner Bernard Carrick. Um, Bernie, thank you very much for being here. Good to see you tonight. Thanks, so let's start at the top of what we discussed there. And I know you want to get to those two videos and talk about those. Um, but just off the top, in terms of the headline, the effort in some of these cities that have seen some of the worst violence that we've seen to try to push for a lower expenditure on police in their cities, what do you think the result of that will be? Well, here's here's the one thing people have to realize, uh, Martha, and you keyed on it. Um, this is this is propaganda right out of the Antifa handbook, right? Defund the police. Well, I challenge any Minneapolis resident to take a ride through Minneapolis, which now looks like Beirut in 1970. Take a ride through it, look at it, and that's with your police there. What's going to happen when they're not? Nobody wants to visit, live, go to school, or work in a place where they're not safe. In most of these communities that have been shelled at this point, they can't keep their communities safe on a normal day. Last week, 82 shootings, 82 shootings in Chicago, 23 dead in 48 hours. What's going to happen when you defund the police? Who's going to protect the people of the city? Who's going to go out there and respond to the violence, the egregious violence that's going on in many of these cities? Who's going to do that? I don't know what they're thinking. It's irresponsible. It's dangerous. It's, um, it's insane. That's what it is. It's insane. So, you know, before I get to those other two instances of police that were fired, I, I want to uh, first show you something that I think is the other side of the equation of what we're talking about. And it's the belief on the part of a lot of young black men and their families that they put themselves in danger when they go outside, that they are too easily misperceived in terms of their role or what they're doing and that it can end badly for them. This just came out this afternoon. It's from members of the NFL, football, NFL football players. Just watch this and I, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Let's watch. What will it take for one of us to be murdered by police brutality? What if I was George Floyd? 
If I was George Floyd. What if I was George Floyd? If I was George Floyd. If I was George Floyd. If I was George Floyd. I am George Floyd. I am Breonna Taylor. I am Ahmaud Arbery. I am Eric Gardner. I am Laquan McDonald. I am Tamir Rice. I am Trayvon Martin. What's your reaction to that? Martha, I'll, I'll take you back to uh, 19, uh, 1989. At some point, I had hair down, well, I had hair, period. But I had hair down the middle of my back. I had seven diamond earrings. I had a big goatee. And I was an undercover up in Harlem. And probably two or three times a week while I was out trying to buy drugs in some of the most violent neighborhoods in the city, I got stopped by the police. I got stopped. I got shaken down. I got tossed. I got I got yelled at. I got pushed because the police were out there trying to do their job. I think people forget what it's like in many of these areas where these cops work. These cops don't go out looking to target black men. They go out because there's a map and on that map in those communities, you got the highest murder rate. You got the highest violent crime rate. You got the highest burglary rate, the robbery rate. That's why those cops are out there. And sometimes the wrong people get stopped. But at the end of the day, they do a job that nobody else would have. They wouldn't have the courage to do. Never in 100 years. And they're out there criticized constantly as racist. And I can tell you, you know, the stats don't fit the argument. Well, there's no doubt that there is a pervasive feeling in these young men. And whether or not the stats meet it, um, the feeling is what we do know is there, just based on, on what they're saying. But I want to put up this uh, picture of these Atlanta police officers uh, in this case where two college students were pulled out of a car um, and they have been suspended, uh, all six of these. So, And, and there's a look at the, uh, five of these uh, men, obviously, are African-American. One of them is white, all on the police force in Atlanta. What's your take on this case? Well, first of all, I, I saw the chief within hours after this event she was disturbed by the incident. They hadn't even seen all of the video. They hadn't conducted a full investigation. That goes on around the country constantly. These, these chiefs are cowards. They respond to community outrage before they have any idea what really happened. I, I just think, you know, it puts every cop's life on the line when they do this. Why don't you conduct a real investigation? If, it, if you think it's criminal, put it before a grand jury. See if you can get a grand jury indictment. Do it right. Do it due process. Do it by the law. That's not what these chiefs are doing. They're scared to death to do their job. Let, let's look at another piece of video, which is the pushing down of this man in Buffalo. Um, and it, so tonight, as I mentioned, those two, the two officers involved in that were suspended. And now tonight, the entire unit has resigned in protest. What do you know about that? And do you think we're going to see more of that? Well, here's, here's what I know. When you watch these videos, listen, when a police officer tells you to move, when there's a curfew, you move. When a police officer tells you to back up, you back up. The police officer, you're not supposed to stick your finger in his face. You're not supposed to touch him. You're not supposed to throw something on him. They've been bombarded with bricks, rocks, Molotov cocktails, sticks, you name it. And you know what? At some point in time, you're going to push the wrong cop. He's going to push back. And in this case, that's what happened. We'll see where it goes. Uh, Bernard Carrick, thank you very much. Good to have you here. Uh, well, Thanks, Martha. It's a complicated story, and we appreciate you weighing in. Always good to see you, Bernie. Thank you very much. So